Hello again from Skip Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle. After doing the 23 centimeter amplifier earlier, uh, cleaning out the water system on it, I thought I better do the 13 centimeter also. I uh, I don't do it as often. It doesn't seem to get as bad probably because there uh, there is no high voltage involved in this uh, cooling system. So it's been about four years. Uh, not that long, but I figured I'll take them apart and clean them anyways. I already had the water purged out of the system from when I did the uh, 23 centimeter amp. They, they share the same water source. So all I had left to do was disconnect the uh, uh, few wires and cables. I got the order of the videos kind of mixed up here. I uh, started with amplifier A, which is at the top, but this is amplifier B being pulled out of the rack. Uh, same difference. No fancy slides for these uh, pull out of the rack and the water manifolds on the back get caught up and things so you got to be a little little patient with it. So this is one of the Spectrain amplifiers that's been modified or converted over to be water cooled. I'm not going to deal with the RF section at all this time so uh, flip it over and we see where the uh, water system is where the two heat exchangers are for cooling the uh, Spectrain boards. One thing that caught my eye was the uh, one plastic water line that goes over to the uh, manifold at the right. The tubing is actually pinching itself uh, sort of closed. I tried to keep it open with a clamp, but it didn't uh, didn't work. So that's uh, something I'll have to address. So before I start to uh, tear this thing apart, i got to drain more water out of it. There's uh, always lots of water. So with it all drained out, I put her back up on the bench and next I take the uh, two plastic lines off that go from the heat exchangers over to the, uh, the outlet manifold. Then next I take the input manifold off the two heat exchangers. I use a PEC style of uh, clamps on the tubing here and they can be reused. Uh, there isn't much pressure in this, so I just use a pair of needle-nose pliers and I kind of spread them a little bit and then work their way off and, and set them aside to uh, reuse them later. Once you get the clamps loose, uh, it's uh, not hard at all to take it off. So with all the water manifolds removed, we can pull the exchanger off the uh, main chassis itself. There are six long bolts that go through the heat exchanger body and thread into the uh, lower chassis of the main amplifier itself. Uh, the rest of them are just uh, half inch bolts that hold the heat exchanger together. The heat exchanger is kind of stuck to the chassis with all the heat sink compound that's uh, smeared between two of them, so it takes a bit of a pry. Oh, more water. And of course, a little bit more water trickling out of the heat exchanger. The other heat exchanger is uh, removed the same way. Uh, Got to get all six bolts out of it and then pry up both it uh, with a screwdriver to get it to break loose from the chassis. This time I used my uh, head and uh, got prepared for a little bit of water drippage. Then the messy job of getting the old heat sink compound off the uh, heat exchanger so you know it doesn't spread all over the place. It's messy. And uh, get it off the chassis of the amplifier also. I find using a little bit of alcohol with a rag and just uh, just keep wiping. So with all that goop wiped off, I think we'll clean to work with. Start taking all the bolts out of the heat exchanger to get the lid, lid off it.
Finally, with all the bolts taken out, we can uh, split the case. It uh, takes a bit of doing because it's uh, sealed together with uh, some uh, gasket sealant to you know make it waterproof. It's just a matter of getting it split and uh, pried apart. The, the uh, silicon rubber or the gasket goo is is uh, really quite thin, so it doesn't take too much. To my pleasant surprise, it uh, didn't look all that bad inside. I've, <laughs> it kind of it kind of shocked me. Uh, four years ago, roughly, the last time I took this thing apart, it had a lot more uh, whitish slime inside. So I get a sneaky feeling the aluminum has kind of uh, got a hardened cover on it now or something that uh, prevents uh, so much corrosion and uh, thus it's kind of sealed. I don't know. didn't look all that bad anyway, so I was, I was glad to see it. Give it a rub with a rag here and uh, not much came off. A little bit, of course, but uh, I expect a lot worse. So I got the uh, second exchanger off and got a split and looked inside, and it didn't look too bad either, so I was I was quite happy. So on to the next stage of uh, this little project is cleaning up these uh, two exchangers the best I can and then uh, work on the next amplifier after that. So nothing difficult, just a little bit of elbow grease is all is required. Normally, uh, before, I think I've used just ordinary fine steel wool, but I took some advice from a good friend and who told me that possibly some of the steel wool might be getting embedded in the aluminum and then it rusts and, you know, corrupts the water. So I found this uh, synthetic steel wool, it's called, it's just a rough, uh, I don't know, how do you describe it, plastic material anyways, and uh, cut it up into strips and... Uh, just got in between the fins and scrubbed and scrubbed until, you know, got all the excess loose stuff off. For the brass tubing, which probably was corroded more than anything, I just took the same material and twisted it up into a tight little roll, stuck it in one of my drills and uh, just went in and out of the tubing and it just cleaned it up nice and neat. Worked uh, well for all, everything like that. So to put this heat exchanger back together again, I use this uh, gasket sealant. It's uh, kind of like a silicon rubber. It's supposed to be high temperature, which I don't need, but it uh, goes on nice and thin and it's easy to apply. So with a nice thin layer of sealant applied, I can put the lid on next and uh, make sure that the right end is on the uh, corresponding end so the holes line up. Eh, it's been done. You know what I mean. Then all the bolts. Uh, these are 632s. I start with the uh, ones in the corners to make sure things line up and then uh, start putting them all in. Before I tighten them all down, I put the six um, uh, longer bolts that, that uh, hold the heat exchanger to the amplifier chassis just to make darn sure, you know, the holes line up, everything slides through nice and easy. Then I start tightening them all down. So, got both uh, amplifiers done. The uh, second amplifier is done the same way. The uh, way it was cleaned and all that, got the manifolds all cleaned up, and uh, so it's time to prepare the chassis and start putting that back together. I placed the heat exchangers on the chassis and kind of pre-marked it with a pencil where they go so I wouldn't be smearing this uh, new heat sink compound all over the place. Uh, messy stuff, and I just squeezed it out and started spreading it around.
then I took the one heat exchanger that's going to go in first and uh, give it a good coating of uh, heat sink compound also. Then it's just a matter of getting it lined up. The uh, two brass pipes kind of got to fit around uh, some of the uh, semi-hard line there, but get a position, get one of the bo longer bolts threaded in, and then everything just lines up and fits in place. Once the two uh, starting bolts are in place, then you put all uh, six bolts in and suck her down tight. And the second heat exchanger is done the same way. Uh, heat sink compound put on it, put in place and bolted down. Same as the first one. Next would be the uh, water manifolds, but if you remember on, on the first amplifier and then on this is the B amplifier, how the plastic tubing it was kinking itself over a period of time and it was actually restricting the flow. So I had to modify the uh, manifold itself to straighten that, that tubing out so it wouldn't happen. Kind of got kind of messy soldering it, but I just merely took the one pipe out, cut a new one and put it out at a bit of an angle so the plastic tubing would line up uh, more straight onto it. Again, I got some new plastic tubing. This is the half inch stuff and uh, cut it to length. Put the uh, PEX clamps on it again, the reusable ones I'm using, and then uh, stuck them back on there and it fit the uh, angle tube a lot better. Shouldn't be any pinching going on now or crimping, I should say, from the tubing being at such an angle. These uh, PEX clamps that I've reused, I've had them out in the garage and I have a, a special shaped bolt that I put them on to spread them open a little bit more. and. I slide them in position and I got this weird tool that I've had forever. I don't know what it's for, but it works just fine for uh, pinching these clamps tight. It pinches them, squeezes them nice and tight and uh, it won't leak. Next is the uh, four port uh, water intake manifold. I uh, cut four new pieces of plastic tubing about three inches long and slide them over the tubes and, and then again use the uh, same PEX clamps I've had before, get them in position and uh, pinch them tight and, and um, it seals up pretty good, it won't leak again. Next is to get the uh, four port manifold back onto the amplifier chassis itself or onto the heat exchanger. So. Uh, four more PEX clamps are slid over them, so I don't forget, because you can't put them on once it's on there. And uh, take the plastic tubing and orientate them over the brass pipes and uh, wiggle it on. Kind of eyeball the uh, copper pipe there to make kind of make sure it looks square to the world, so it's lined up with the chassis. You don't want to look too crooked. And, and then um, wiggle the clamps back over the brass tubes, where they got to be... Uh, crimp them on tight. So next take that weird crimping tool I have and uh, get on those crimping clamps there and uh, squeeze them tight. They make a good uh, make a good seal these clamps. Um, they're, they're hard to reuse but they can be and uh, and uh, I, I think you can use them over and over again. I don't know unless unless they break. I, no reason why you couldn't. So that pretty well wraps it up for getting the two amplifiers uh, cleaned and put back together again. So what's left now is put it back in the rack and uh, start hooking things back up again with the external water lines to the uh, external tanks. 
just like when I was taking them out, uh, putting them back in, the <laughs> those water manifolds hanging at the bottom, and they get hooked up on things. So you gotta you gotta be a little gentle and uh, just kind of rock it back and forth, and it'll go in eventually. This is a view that I've never seen before, so I thought I'd record it, uh, see what, what things are catching on. There's some little metal tabs that are uh, bolted to the rack that supports the back of the shelf, the amplifier shelf, and it, uh, that's what the uh, chassis is catching on. They're, it's kind of dark there, you really can't see them, but they're just little little pieces I got and I bolted in there to support things, and once it's on top, it slides in nice. So, brand new plastic tubing, I uh, started cutting the longer lengths of it to go from the various uh, water manifolds of the amplifier system down to the uh, T connections and the valves on the external water tank or the cooling reservoirs themselves. Uh, you can see towels. I got towels stuffed in in different places because it's, well, I got those new manifolds in there that I built or, or modified and, uh, you know, I, I air pressure tested them, but Will they leak? I don't know. I don't want water dripping into the uh, circuitry underneath. So uh, stuff some rags in there just to uh, catch the water for the first initial uh, water test. And just like I said before, when you're dealing with a water-cooled amplifier system, you better have lots of towels laying around when you uh, redo something like this because sure enough, there is a small leak right there, uh, again, on those uh, junctions. There, and uh, I usually just take them up, and it was good to go after that. Anyways, lots of tubing. It's kind of a maze, just like the wiring. And it uh, all came together, and uh, thing worked good. Uh, the only thing I did do wrong was I had the two uh, two lines crisscrossed, and uh, when I turned the water pump system on, I noticed one uh, one one uh, side of the amplifier wasn't um, wasn't pumping any water. I looked at the reservoir tanks, and one was emptying down, the other one was filling up. So I had the uh, two lines crossed, and I was merely emptying one system into the other side. So. I got that fixed, and uh, it was good to go after that. Anyways, after all that, I uh, hooked up the rest of the cabling, got all the RF lines hooked up and the control wires and uh, all of this and that, and uh, it's ready to test. So when I get the 13-centimeter uh, feedback on the dish, I'll fire things up. should work like a charm. It uh, you know, never did nothing to the RF side of things, so but that's Murphy for you. We'll, we'll find out in time. So that's it for now. Now you know what the uh, joy of having water-cooled amplifiers is like. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. It didn't get too long or boring this time, I hope. 73 is from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle.